Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to NetSuite's SuiteScript 2.0 API. We'll be coding in TypeScript using some of the open source build tools that Head in the Cloud has created to make writing and uploading code faster, easier, and more reliable. The goals of this video are to get you set up with a development environment that can automatically upload TypeScript code to NetSuite, to enable you to have SuiteScript 2.0 API IntelliSense as you type, to demonstrate how to upload and implement a script in NetSuite. And finally, we'll walk through a real user event scripting example scenario. This video is intended for NetSuite developers and administrators. You should have the administrator role in NetSuite to do everything I cover here. You should at least be familiar with JavaScript and basic web technologies here, and I assume that you've at least looked at the SuiteScript API before. Okay, so first we need to download and install a couple of pieces of software. These are both totally free. For what we're doing today, the IDE we'll be using is Visual Studio Code. This is a relatively new IDE made by Microsoft. It's lightweight, cross-platform, and totally free. Go ahead and download and install that now. Second, you'll need to have Node.js installed. You can get it at nodejs.org. And I'll mention that we've had some issues with the newer versions of Node, so I would recommend that you get specifically version 11.15.0. You can get it from this previous releases URL here. Next, we need to install our HITC uploader bundle in NetSuite. To do that, go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles, and just type in Head in the Cloud. Our upload wrestlet should be the first one that comes up. Go ahead and install that. The next thing we're going to do is create a token for you. So if you haven't turned on token-based authentication, I'll quickly show you how here. You go to Setup, Company, Enable Features. It's on the Suite Cloud tab. Under Manage Authentication, you need to have token-based authentication enabled. So after the bundle is installed, we'll need to edit our employee record and give yourself the HITC uploader role. Here's how we do that. Let's go to the Access tab and add the HITC uploader role, and then click Save. Now we're ready to create our token. To do this, go to Setup, Users and Roles, Access Tokens, New. The application name is HITC Uploader, User is Yourself, Role is HITC Uploader, and then click Save. Now don't touch anything. These codes only display once, so leave this on the screen and we'll come back to it in a couple of minutes. Okay, now everything is ready. Let's open up VS Code and get going. So first you'll need to create a folder to hold your scripts for this project. Here I've named my folder SSV2 Video Suite Scripts. And I have this folder open in VS Code. And you'll notice that I've already added a few files here to save some time. You'll need to create each of these as well, so let's take a look at each one and I'll explain them. First, let's look at gulpfile.js. Gulp is a tool that automates uploading groups of files. Go ahead and copy these two lines of code. And here I'll mention that you may need to install Gulp globally if you haven't. To bring up a terminal in VS Code, use the View Terminal menu option. You can install Gulp with the command npm install g gulp. That should take about 10 seconds or so. Second, let's look at the package.json file. When using Node.js, a package.json file tells the Node package manager which packages and versions need to be installed. So this file is how we tell it to load our three head in the cloud modules that we use to validate our code against the API and to upload it to NetSuite. Now I recommend you pause the video here and get this file set up in your folder. The third file is this tsconfig.json file. This file controls how TypeScript files are handled. Again, I recommend you pause the video here and fill this in on your computer. Also, I'll mention that I should be able to put a comment on the video here to include these files so you don't have to type everything yourself. 
Next, let's check this tasks.json file in the .vs code folder. This file tells VS Code how to handle our gulp upload command. Next, let's take a look at this .hitc upload file. This is the file that tells the uploader which NetSuite accounts pertain to this project, which accounts we'll be uploading to, in other words. So for example, you might have a production account, a sandbox, and a release preview account all listed here. This file contains a list of objects where we specify the account number, a name, and a file cabinet folder. You'll see how this is used in a few minutes. Go ahead and set this file up on your end. Now we need to set up this .hitc upload token file. You should have a token set up for each account that you've listed in your .hitc upload file. So this is where we plug in the token ID and token secret from the token in NetSuite. I'll copy these in now. Now it's time to install our node modules. Go to the view terminal again and enter in npm install. This might take a minute or two. When this is done, you should see that it added a node modules folder and a package lock.json file. No need to look at these. Finally, let's set up a keyboard shortcut that we'll use when it's time to upload code. So in the code menu, or the files menu in Windows, Go to Preferences and Keyboard Shortcuts. In the search bar, search for Tasks Run Build Task, and then click the Edit icon by the Tasks Run Build Task option. I usually set my upload shortcut to Command Shift B. You can set yours to whatever you want. So now we're ready to start coding. Let's talk about what we want to accomplish here first. I'm going to go to a customer record. So on a customer, we have a sales rep field. Let's say that my goal is to restrict which sales reps show up in this list here. Perhaps we only want the user to be able to select sales reps whose location is in the same state as the customer. That way, the customer might feel like they're being handled more by a local specialist. While this particular example criteria may not be useful to you, let's pause and think about this from a generalized perspective. With what I'm about to show you, you can effectively apply your own filtering to any list field in NetSuite. That's pretty powerful, and it can be very helpful for eliminating irrelevant values from long select fields, making the important values much easier for users to see and select from. So, we can do this with a user event script, where basically we add a new field that visually replaces this one when a user is editing a customer. Let's get to it. So we'll start by creating a customer user event.ts file. Go ahead and enter in the boilerplate so it looks like mine. We're starting with just an empty before load entry point for now. Now one important thing to think about whenever you're writing a user event script is, what context do I want this code to run in? Sometimes you'll want the code you write to only execute in user interface context, for example. But more importantly, in user event scripts, I find it's always a good idea to specify what types of user events the code should run in. In other words, should it be running in view mode, create mode, edit, delete, xedit, etc. For this script, we're adding a field, so we would want that to happen in create, edit, and copy modes. So we'll do that now. Now notice here that I'm using the array.includes method. This is a new language feature as of ES7, which means that will only work here in SuiteScript 2.1, not 2.0. Okay, so now let's add an execution log and then build from there iteratively. Now let's go ahead and upload this script to NetSuite. I'm pressing my shortcut, Command-Shift-B, and here it was successfully uploaded. So now in NetSuite, we'll create our script. And we'll deploy it to customers.
Now if I just load any customer in edit mode, you should see an execution log here. Great, nothing is broken yet, so let's keep going. Let's talk about what we need to do from here. Again, our goal is to add a new field that shows a filtered list of sales reps. Now I always find it easiest to create searches first within the NetSuite UI. So to get our filtered list of sales reps, we need to do a search on employee records. And I just happen to have a saved search here that we can use. Now I probably don't need to tell you that address records in NetSuite are a little bit funny. In scripts, they can be difficult to work with, but where there's a will, there's a way. So take a look at my search filter here. I'm using a formula to say that the state of the location must be in California. The reason why we do this will make more sense in a few minutes when we look at the code. There's this wonderful Chrome plugin out here that I want to show you. It's this NetSuite Search Export plugin for Chrome, and what it does is it adds this Export as Script button to any saved search. And I can click on this to see the SuiteScript 1 and SuiteScript 2 code for making this search. Now I never copy this directly because I don't like the formatting, but I do like to be able to look at how the filters and columns are set up here and use that in my script. So let's get this search entered into our script now. So before we do our search, let's add our custom sales rep field to the form. And since it's a select field, let's go ahead and add a blank select value for it to start with. And now for our search, we need to know what the customer's state is. And to be specific, let's get their default billing state. And from testing, I know that this gives us the two-letter abbreviation. Now we can do our search. And of course, we'll need the end search module for this. Again, notice I'm using the formula criteria here, since otherwise I'd have to know the numeric ID of the state, which we don't have. And for the search columns, we just need the entity ID, since that's the employee's full name. Now for each result of our search, we'll add that employee into our select field. Now notice here that the compiler is angry with us because it says that the type of employee name isn't compatible with the string type that text requires. To fix this, we need to put as string here at the end of the employee name variable. We do this to tell the compiler that we know that the value is a string, even though get value can also return other data types. Now let's upload this and see how it looks. I'll refresh my customer in NetSuite. So here's our new field, and it looks great. We have our filtered list of sales reps. Next, we need to set it so that whatever value a user selects here actually gets set into the real sales rep field. Otherwise, there's no point in having this field. So first, let's move our sales rep field to be right next to the built-in field.
Let's also give it some help text to help users understand how this field works. And while we're here, let's set the built-in sales rep field to displays inline so we're not tempted to edit it. To do that, we need the UI server widget module. And finally, let's set the default value of our custom field to be the value from the built-in sales rep field. Again, I'll have to use as string here to make the compiler happy. Now let's add a before submit entry point to the script here as well. That way we can take the value from our custom sales rep field and set it into the built-in sales rep field. Let's say that in create or edit context, if we have a value for our custom sales rep, we'll set that into the built-in sales rep field. Now let's upload and test this. I'll refresh my customer and we should see, okay, so we can see that our custom field default value is working. Now if I change it and save the customer, now this is interesting. It looks like I tried to set an employee who's not actually a sales rep. This is a good test case. Let's see if we can resolve that. So what we can do is back on our saved search, we can add a filter to say, is sales rep must be yes. We'll do save and run. And we'll go back to edit and click export as script again to see that this is the filter we should add, sales rep is T. So let's add that to our code. And re upload it. Now we should see a shorter list here of sales reps. Now I'll change the value in my custom field to Clark Couser, and we should see that value set in the built-in sales rep field when we save it. Okay, that works great. Now the final thing, let's hide this built-in sales rep field for a more seamless entry experience. To do that, we'll just change the display type here to hidden, and we'll upload this. Great, okay, so now I can just change this to anything. And when I save, I should see that value in the standard sales rep field. It's a very seamless user experience. And that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to SweetScript 2.0 and TypeScript. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you at SweetWorld.